Hey y'all, happy Monday. So I, <laughs> I love seeing how he brings all the things together. And I knew that, I, I know that we've been where we're supposed to have, have been, but I also knew that it was time to dig into Psalm 1. And I wasn't really sure how we were going to transition from one to the other. It was going to be a straight cut. But in preparation for this week, where we ended last week is exactly where the Psalm 1 book picks up. And so we are going to be digging into Psalm 1 again over the next, well, until we get finished. And do you know that I love Psalm 1? And I also love that no matter how many times I've read it, he always, always, always reveals another piece. So, you know, I'm going to encourage you, don't say, oh, I've already done this with her before. We've already been here before. Because it is inevitable, because this is the living Word of God, that He's going to bring out something new. There is always more to learn about the Father. And there is always another level that He can take us. So, we ended on Friday looking at Galatians 5.25, which we're going we're gonna to recap that and then um, tie that in and move forward into Psalm 1. So we've been talking about living by the Spirit and allowing the Spirit, Holy Spirit, to have control. And all of this, this is, we've been on the same thread since, um, well, since December 1st when we started um, about the women in Matthew and the genealogy of Jesus and it being all about the Father. So um, regardless of... Uh, any mess or mistake or all of the yuck that may be in our lives. When Mary gave birth to Jesus, it was about God. It wasn't mankind. It was, he was born of God. And then we have the opportunity to be born of God as well. And to live like Jesus lived, to imitate, as Ephesians 5, 1 tells us, to be imitators of our Father. Do what He does. Say what He says. And that in order to do that, we do have to be born again. That our flesh, that sin nature, has to die. And we have to be washed by the Word. And then it's His Spirit in us that enables us to look like our Father. It is Him in us that is able to reign in or as, as we submit and yield to His Spirit in us. That's what we read last week from Galatians 5, that the two natures are constantly in conflict with one another. But when we yield to the Spirit, Yielding to the Spirit. And so let's read that, 525. I'm going to read it first in um, the Amplified Translation, which says, If we live by the Holy Spirit, let us also walk by the Spirit. If by the Holy Spirit we have our life in God, let us go forward walking in line, our conduct controlled by the Spirit. The Passion says, If the Spirit is the source of our life, we must also allow the Spirit to direct every aspect of our lives. To direct every aspect. And you know as well as I do that there are voices coming in from all over. How many voices in a day do you have speaking into your ear? And so we have to choose to allow the voice of the Spirit to direct our steps and guide our lives. And when we do that, <laughs> we're walking in His way and His righteousness. 
And we've read Matthew 5. This ties in the last piece in order to start Psalm 1. That Matthew 5, 13 through 16 talks about us being the light of the world. And so when we allow the Holy Spirit to direct every step, every aspect of our lives, as we just read, then it says your light will shine before men so that they see your moral excellence, your praiseworthy, noble, and good deeds, and they will recognize honor, praise, and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Our assignment here in this earth is to point to the Father, His goodness, His love. Just like Jesus said that He glorified the Father, we glorify the Father by allowing the Spirit to lead and direct our lives. All right, we'll pick up here tomorrow. I'll see you then. Bye, y'all.